Hi everyone, welcome to my Nerdy Weekly Roundup. Hi everyone, another week by, more shows to watch. So, what have I been watching this week? Wow. Obviously, uh, I started off with a review of the, the Last of Us last week um, and watched episode two with apprehension. <laughs> um, yeah, and I really enjoyed this episode, I have to say. Um, loved the start, going back to, you know, where it all began um, and bringing in this, this doctor um, to examine a body that they found and and the actress um uh, was, was just fantastic in it you know um her confusion as to why she'd be looking at a human being and that this fungus doesn't grow in people and then she's examining the body and those horrible tendrils come out of the mouth and she's just you know aliens you know nuke us from orbit it's the only way we can be sure and to recommend something so drastic, um, you know, uh, in the city that she lives and she knows what she's saying, she's going to, you know, uh, have herself and her family bombed. Um, I think this is all in Jakarta, where in episode one, you know, we kind of heard something on the radio that something had happened there. And this sort of seems to be, you know, the, 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 the place that this, this thing has started. Um, they I was saying it happened in this um, flower factory. So it's like grains and things like that, that, that this, this is maybe how it started or it's mutated. Um, and like 14 people from the factory are missing. Um, but yeah, I thought that whole thing was done really well. Obviously, again, these are add-ons to the game, as I understand it. There's no sort of real backstory or not done in this way, sort of flashback. But the way the, the, the woman acted it was absolutely amazing. You know, it was just really down to earth and realistic and, and understanding what she was seeing. And the gravitas to say, like, you know, bomb, bomb, bomb the, the place, like, this is the only way we can stop it. So if this thing gets out there, we're screwed, <laughs> which they were. <laughs> so then, of course, we jump to present in game um, with um, Joel and Tess trying to get um, Ellie uh, out. And um, they, they obviously discover in this episode, and uh, she explains the whole that. She's immune to the, the bites that she gets bitten, but she doesn't change. Um, and obviously they they understand the gravitas or Tess understand the gravitas of that. And she's like, well, we, we, we've, got, we've got to get her to the doctors. This is a chance of a cure. Joel's massively skeptical. He's like, well, we've heard this hundred times every time, you know, someone's, uh, you know, they're on, they're on the edge of a cure and it never comes. But then as the episode proceeds, um, you know, Ellie gets bitten again and he sees it for himself that she doesn't turn, it, like nothing happens. Um, and sort of sign, like buys into, okay, look, th th there's something really here. We've, we've got to get her to the, this camp where, where they know there's, there's scientists and doctors. Um, which is obviously easier said than done with the various factions and these, these zombie type creatures, clickers, I think they're called. Um, which I thought my makeup was fantastic on these sort of cauliflower head things, <laughs> um, and the sort of twitching and the body uh, animation I really liked. Um, I guess you know, like we say, we're not, it's not really seeing anything groundbreaking. We're not really seeing anything different. Um, but actually, I, I just like the way it's all sort of hanging together. Um, and I think there's quite a few um, concerns from uh, gamers that uh, the actress that plays Tess is listed for like five episodes. And uh, spoilers, spoilers, whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, Tess gets killed very early on in the game. Um, and were they gonna do the same thing in the show? And the answer was yes. <laughs> she basically got killed in this this, this um, episode, which again, I thought was done really well. Uh, while they're trying to go through this museum, they disturb some of these clickers uh, and I'll see a fight in shoes and they manage to get through um, to get to the sort of town hall where they're trying to get to. Uh, but Tess gets bitten um, and, and then um, they kind of go into this town hall and 
the people we're going to meet are all dead. Like, there's already been some sort of ambush. Um, but Tess is like, well, you know, you've got to push on. You've got to get Ellie, where she, you know, to these doctors. Um, and, and basically, it just, it just sort of transpires that she's been bitten. You can see the infection like, crawling up her neck. And she gets Joel to promise to take her. Um, she's going to stay and bite them time. Um, and <laughs> the grossest thing we've seen on TV in a long time. So Joel grabs Ellie and she's all screaming and being annoying, like, oh, we can't leave her, we can't leave her. Uh, like, stop being such a brat and just picking, you know. Um, so he sort of drags her out there and Tess, like, kicks over these drums uh, for, like, kerosene or petrol or something. Um, <laughs> and then takes a lighter out and the lighter won't light. It's like, maybe should have tested the lighter worked first, maybe. I don't know. Um, so anyway, she's sort of kicking these drums over, and then um, when they when they came in, they had to kill some of these clickers, and they've, they've stepped on some of these tendrils, which they explained in episode one that these kind of sort of send like electric pulses through. So it's like a horde, like a mile away, you can feel these. And again, I, I really love the way they did this. So they sort of you know had to kill one of these 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 clicker things, and you sort of just see the tendrils just just ever so subtly flicker, like like hardly anything to it. And then you cut to it's like dozens of these things just like lying on the ground like they're asleep. And then all of a sudden they all just go and they're up and they're just running and they know they know that they're coming. So they 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 burst in. Tess is there frantically trying to <laughs> light this lighter. Um and obviously that makes a noise because these things are blind, they 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 can't see you, but they they have acute hearing, and it's absolutely <laughs> gross. <laughs> creature with all these tendrils coming out of the mouth clocks the noise and so sort of, and obviously she's got she's got to keep trying this lighter and it's just coming towards her and coming towards her and it's like right in front of her and it sort of goes in literally like he's gonna kiss her and basically does kind of kiss her and put obviously like puts these tendrils down and the, I think everybody was just like <laughs> it's just like what the hell but it's kind of cool and gross and Again, different actually. We <laughs> I don't think we've seen a you know death by zombie kiss before. Bite, but not kiss. But just as he's like you know doing the do, she manages to get the lighter lit, throws it on the floor, just blows the building. Um, and that's sort of pretty much where episode two ends. Um, I think again it was probably quite a lot of you know just trying to build a character and the dynamics and. You know the relationships in this so not a massive amount happened um i say they just sort of cut, she sort of got through this building and and and, and obviously test getting bit but i did really enjoy it i did enjoy it um i thought it's like building the story really well i'm still not sold on bella ramsey they did sort of start to sort of spin her character a little bit and they brought up, you know, that, that she can't swim, which I'm sure will be important later on. <laughs> as it's all wading through this water. Um, so, but, but again, you know, there was just lots of F-bombs. And obviously, I mean, that's, that's down to the writers, I guess, you know. But, yeah, I'm still really not gelling with that. I mean, if we're meant to sort of feel sorry for this character or have any um, connection with her um, and worried about what happens to her, They've really not established that yet. Um, you're still a bit like, well, no great loss other than if she gets killed, you know, other than the point of that she's immune. But you're just like, she's not particularly likable at the moment. And all the kind of nonsense where, they, you know, he's trying to save her and she's like, oh, we can't leave Tess. It's like, yeah, come on. Because on the one hand, yeah, she's like 14 years old. But on the other hand, you're trying to build her as like old for her years and she's been on her own and she knows what this world's like and she knows about the sacrifices you need to make so it doesn't really work or I guess I can say like when it comes to it you know she acts mature but you know in situations like that she does revert to a 14 year old I suppose but yeah I'm hoping I'm hoping her character does get better because it's a shame um uh I said Pedro for Joel, you know uh took front and center on this episode um he sort of was really able to step up in his character and, uh, you know, be behaving like you expect a man to behave. Tess wasn't overbearing or taking his agency. I think they're pretty um, 
evenly matched in this episode so yeah um uh, relieved actually that episode two was good um really looking forward to episode three on monday um yeah i think it drops uh on sundays in the states on hbo and we obviously get it on um sky atlantic now tv sky on monday so yeah pleasantly surprised by episode two i hope it continues um apparently has been announced that there will be a season two mixed feelings <laughs> uh, i think we're all uh very much waiting to see obviously how this series pans out can they prevent it from going off a cliff so far so good but it all really depends on where the, the, you know if they choose to adapt the last of us two for season two if they do this shows doa no nobody's gonna i mean the normies will probably as myself but i know about uh the, the dumpster fire that was uh, the, the part two of the game um so i think people will tune in initially but then if it sticks to the plot and you kill off your main character in episode one and everything that transpires I think people are going to bail. So let's, let's wait and see if they have the balls to write a different season two, take the story in a different direction, or whether they're chained to that horrific <laughs> poo show, shit show that was The Last of Us Part Two. We shall see. So, um, a show that dropped on Netflix yesterday, Lockwood and Co. I'd seen the trailers for this. It's sort of a supernatural young adult drama um, based on a series of books, or five, I think five books by um, Jonathan Stroud. Um, and season one is obviously book one. Um, I'd say I wasn't familiar with these books. I mean, they're young adult books, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really aimed at me and again like I say this show's not really aimed at, at me but I think what they've done well is that um I watched it quite enjoyed it um there was a little bit of obviously it's a young adult show so there's, there's, there's quite a bit that, that we're talking of feelings and stuff but not overly not to the point you're just like Ugh. but there are some crunch points um you know where you know yeah, yeah which you see in loads of things you know it's like right we've got three minutes before the building's gonna blow up so you stand and have a conversation it's like really <laughs> so, there's a few little annoying bits like that uh you've got three lead characters you've got um lucy carlisle anthony lockwood and george kareen are the three main characters so in this universe um something's happened um and we we, we haven't we don't find out the cause in season one and what I did like actually is the uh watch watch the intro of the first episode and actually built into the intro they kind of give you a bit of backstory of, of what's what's going on so rather than going lots of exposition and, and talking about what's happened in the show I mean obviously there's some of that the actual sort of pre pretense of, of, of setting you up as to where we are now is actually in the opening credits so I thought that was really well done so what's happened is that at some point um, ghosts started to appear so obviously when people are dying we start seeing ghosts but these ghosts when they touch living thing it kills them and we sort of see like death sort of skyrocketing it's like these ghosts everywhere and it's killing people and obviously that creates more ghosts and then out of this they found that children are uh, so by children we assume sort of under 18 sort of around 18 they, 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 they are sensitive to this and kids not all children, but majority of them have uh, different. So if you think about your senses, so some some see all different types of ghosts, some can hear them, and they all have these sort of slight different sensitivities. And these sort of companies or academies are set up where the children said if they've got these sensitive sensitivities, where they're trained to fight the ghosts. Um, and like a lot of these genres, they find you know it's the same sort of things like iron, silver, salt, um affects ghosts and this is how they can help capture them and kill them and things like that so the premise is really interesting like so we, so why, why did this suddenly start happening why are the children sensitive to it and obviously you've got a scenario where you've got kids basically risking their lives um, so rather than going to the ghost these academies rather than schools and risking their lives and you know sort of having to grow up very quickly to, to sort of save everybody else and the adults and there's this uh 
kind of police that's set up um, that when they, they find certain artifacts, because when a ghost dies, it can kind of leave its psychic impression on objects. They can be linked to the objects. And when they get the ghost, they sort of hand over these objects and they, they destroy them. So you've got this different dynamic and there's certain rules around these academies and having um, adult supervision and things like that. So, yeah, really, really interesting concept. So we, we, it sort of starts off with uh, Lucy's story and she's gone to one of these academies. Um, she doesn't have a good relationship with her mother. Her mother just sort of sees a bit of a, you know, she's sort of embarrassed by her and sort of just sort of sees her as a bit of a cash cow sent to one of these academies but she she really doesn't support her daughter um and uh she joins this academy and she becomes friends obviously with her team and she gets trained um and then they're sent on a job and their sort of supervisor um is a bit sort of jaded and sort of resents sort of having to do what he does and he looks like he's got a bit of a drink problem so he, he sort of sends them in this, this team, you know, like sort of five or six of them, her and her best friend and a couple of others, um, and basically hadn't done the research properly. And what they thought was there wasn't there. There was something much bigger and much more dangerous there. Um, and she she gets sent to go get him to say, what do we do? It's not what we thought it was. That you know, they're, they're being killed in there. And he's just like, you know, because he's drinking out of his flask and whatnot. He's like, oh, what, you know, you'll have to sort of shut up and get back in there. She runs in to sort of basically find most of her friends killed. And her best friend is sort of having her life force sort of drained from her. And you see there's like, just does later on in the hospital, you just see there's dozens and dozens of kids kind of in this sort of coma state where their eyes are sort of glassed over and sort of milky, like almost like cataracts. And they're like in this, this vegetative coma state, sort of like between worlds kind of thing. Um, and I think that will probably get explained more as the books go on and, and what, what does all that mean. But basically he comes in, sees what's going on, panics and runs away. And then obviously uh, there's like an inquest after this happens. He basically lies out of his ass and blames Lucy. I said she didn't follow orders and she didn't make it clear enough that there was a problem. Um, and uh, she takes the fall for it and ends up running away to London. Um, she got up to level three, you have to be like a level four, there's all these different levels and she has to have paperwork to join the academies in London, so none of them will accept her. And she sees this advert for Lockwood and Co. And she goes to the house and it's basically, it's Anthony Lockwood and George, they're, they're, they're all supposed to be around sort of 15, 16, I think, or maybe 14 to 16. Um, and they're recruiting for uh, someone to join their team. We find out that Anthony Lockwood um, lost his parents. Um, so he's sort of very, very well spoken. Looks like he's sort of come from money. He's got his massive, which must be like a sort of six million pound house in, in London. Um, anyway, um, so she ends up joining the team and then they, they go on these various adventures and the story sort of plays out around this mirror that holds powers and you can sort of see to the other side. I think the acting is very, very solid. Uh, the chemistry was very good between the characters. Um, obviously, where you've got uh, a lead female young girl, you're a little bit like, oh, she, you know, she was actually okay. There was a, there's a, a few times where she's a little bit overbearing, but I think generally very well written. The dynamic between her and Anthony is, is very well balanced. You know, she's not telling him what to do all the time or putting him down. He's very um, arrogant. <laughs> Um, and he's obviously got a lot of issues and demons around uh, losing his parents. And, and again, we don't know how they died, but obviously this is all kind of connected. There's something sort of supernatural around how they died. Um, so, yeah, actually, I mean, obviously, I'm not the target audience for this. I think it's something that um, families could absolutely sit and watch together. If you've got um, sort of 11, 11 upwards, sort of like uh, uh, teens, um, it's really quite enjoyable. I mean, I kind of, you know, it kind of um, reminds me a little bit of probably, a, it's kind of like a little sort of Sarah Jane adventures vibe. It's probably a little bit more swearing in it than Sarah Jane. But again, there's no there's no F-bombs, um, given it's sort of aimed at children. I thought the language was quite moderated and it's not all the time, you know. Um, yeah, it's quite, quite an interesting story. I think the premise is very interesting. I enjoyed season one. Um, 
I think it's just, yeah, it's just a good bit of fun. Just sort of, you can sort of sit, sit there, switch your brain off a little bit. Um, good acting. Um, and again, like the, so the, so the, the guy that developed this, Joe Cornish, um, he's, he, he used to do a, a, a comedy show, the Adam and Joe show here in the UK years ago. And he'd gone on to, he wrote Attack the Block and, and direct. He's, he's a writer director now. So he's probably best known for Attack the Block. Um, and he co-wrote Ant-Man with Edgar Wright and he wrote uh, the Tintin movie so um, yeah I mean he's sort of developing his his, his own style um, but but yeah I thought it was a good good solid um, show actually um, not too much to complain about remember it is for young adults so there's, there's some stuff that you probably sit there going oh you know, but I, I am not the target audience, so that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But I know I thought it was a good, good, solid show. As ever with Netflix, um, you're like, will we get a season two? And I, I hope we do actually, because I, I thought it was probably pretty decent um, and worth a look. Uh, but you've just got to bear in mind it's it's a young adult show aimed at young adults. But there's not loads of um, you know feelings and talking and you know. Uh, making out of that that there's not a lot of that at all there is a kind of obviously a bit of chemistry and will they won't they form in between anthony and lucy but i don't lean massively he heavily into that which is good so so yeah i thought very enjoy it was enjoyable it was good fun good effects so th let's hope we do get a season two but it's netflix so i won't hold my breath but check it out netflix dropped on friday eight episodes Let's, let's see if we get a season two. <laughs> now a completely change of pace for this one. Again on Netflix, all quite on the Western front, a film um, uh, that's uh, originally a book, a very famous book. It's been remade a couple of times. And the last one was actually a, an American TV version starring John Boy himself, uh, Richard Thomas, or you might know him from the TV adaptation of It, and Ernest Borgnini. <laughs> That's a blast from the past. Um, uh, yeah, so it's, um, I think it's been nominated for some Oscars as well. So it is in German, but again, on Netflix, it's dubbed. I did watch the dubbed version, which is very good, actually. Um, but you can watch the, the German version. So as I say, it's based it's on a book. It's set um, in the First World War, and it's 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 the, the sort of uh, the German sort of side of things, um, and it's quite interesting to see. There's a lot of parallels between how the Germans sort of felt about World War or what happened, you know, with the propaganda with World War One, and the same thing happened on on our side. So it kind of starts with the main character Paul. He's about to graduate from school. He goes to an old boys' school obviously in Germany. He's uh, 18, 19, 18 years old. Um, and basically, uh, there's, a, there's a massive um, drive, obviously, for boys to sign up and go to the front. Um, and it's all, you know, for your country and pride. And this is, like, the, the best thing you can do and support your country and all of that and it's all you know very very exciting and um pretty much like his whole class like pretty much everybody he knows has signed up to go his parents won't sign his permission form um and you know like i say there's all this like it's, it's, so, it's been so glamorous and exciting we're going on an adventure and we're gonna you know like fight and win for our country so he ends up forging his parents' signature on his slip because he doesn't want to be the only one left behind and joins up with his friends. Um, and no sooner do they get to the front do they realise they've been sold a, a massive lie. Um, and uh, anybody that's sort of studied um, the world, well, any of the world wars or history or, you know, you, you watch Blackadder for, for that, you know, um, you know how horrific life was in the trenches. Uh, you know, a lot of them had trench foot. There was flooding, it was damp, there was rats, um, there was disease. Um, and obviously you've just got the constant fighting and bombing and shelling. And um, yeah, there's nothing glamorous about, I mean, the, the message is like, you know, there's nothing glamorous about war. 
and what a pointless exercise it was. Um, and it, it basically sort of say, you know, for the, for the length of the war, um, 1914 to 1919, um, the front line didn't move or it moved metres. So you had 17 million men killed um, to move metres. Um, and they don't shy away from it. It's, 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 uh, you know, they talk about, um, I think, Saving Prior Ryan when the opening of that and how um, realistic it was with storming the beaches and seeing people blown up. Oof, I mean, it's another level in, the, in this film. Um, you know, you see them going over the top. You see the Allies with flamethrowers just burning men alive. Um, obviously, people being shot and blown up. Um, starving people you know uh, when they're injured just pretty much because there's just so many of them and so little medicine and medics that they just pretty much just chucked on beds and they kind of you know uh, if the wounds are sort of, you know bad enough they won't even you know uh, just just need people to die basically they're like if they've got you know less than 50 50 chance of surviving they just don't even bother trying and so you just see the story of Paul, who is this, you know, all, all these these boys who had their whole lives ahead of them and were just so excited, killed off one by one and having these horrific things done to them. And the whole thing, as you see, is that you basically got the generals and the Kaiser way back from the front lines in their warm, like literally mansions, eating, drinking. Oh, we'll fight on and we'll never surrender. And you know, they're all just cowards and this, that, and the other thing, because, you, you know, they're not seeing any of these horrors. And the same thing happened on, on our side, that, you know, we'll keep sending boys to the front and the generals are making these decisions, sending these kids over the top where they're nowhere near the front and they've got, they're at absolutely no risk whatsoever. So I think it was a very poignant book when it was written. Um Obviously, it was written after Second World. I think it was like written in the like 1920s. Uh, it was first. I think the first adaptation was like the 1930s. And unfortunately, you know, you can watch this today, and it's just as poignant now as it was back then. Um, the the lead actor um, uh, Felix uh, Kramer, I believe it's pronounced, done an amazing job. Very very good acting, you know, and just just yeah. Um, and it's a very very sad ending. The, the, um, it does take you up to the literally the end of the, the First World War um, with the armistice starting. Um, yeah, and there's, there's there's no happy ending for for, for any of the characters. Um, I, it's obviously it's it's um, not an easy watch, and it, and it shouldn't be. But I thought it was really well done. I can see why it's been nominated for an Oscar. Um, this the the. The, the way they brought the trench life to life, um, you know, very harrowing. Um, and just, just seeing all these, these, these boys just killed for no reason. I mean, the, the opening of the, of, of the film is like they're going around um, stripping all the uh, boots and coats and shirts off the killed soldiers. They then, you know, get thrown into a truck. They then go to um, uh, like a factory. They clean them all. They stitch them up. They repair the bullet holes. Resewn. Sent back out for another another batch of recruits. And you just see this sort of cycle and how it kind of means nothing. You know, it is literally just the cannon fodder, and round and round it goes. Um, yeah, I just I thought it was done immensely well. I guess it won't be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a massive war war film person myself, but I did really enjoy enjoy this film. Um, I was sort of interested in seeing it because of the um, the nomination for the Oscar. Not not that that particularly tells whether it's a good film or not <laughs> most times. But uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this film. Really hammers own the sort of pointlessness of of, of war um, and the just the attitudes on both sides during the, the First World War. It's a real warts and all look of, 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 of what happened. Um, it's just ordinary, ordinary boys. Um, the, the guy that, that uh, uh, directed this, um, and this is the other reason why I did watch it, because he also done, there was a TV show called Deutschland 83, 
and it went on to do 86 and 89 which was set in um east germany um and this character jonas and it's kind of obviously tracking um what happened in East Germany right way through to the fall of the Berlin Wall in 89 and the collapse of the Soviet Union and what happens to this guy um and then he's sort of part of this, you know uh, uh, being sort of tracked by sort of yeah gets recruited by the Stasi it's a really really good show it was on channel four I think you can still watch it maybe on awful definitely check it out if you get the opportunity and he's also probably well known for the terror uh, which is a show I think on BBC here um so yeah really really good director kind of likes his sort of fairly dark subject matter but yeah i highly recommend um you you you're watching this film if you're kind of into sort of historical um pieces or you know you're a bit of a bit of history buff um yeah which which i am i mean hey i'm a nerd so of course i like my history but yeah, it was really well done. I'd be surprised if it, if it, I can't remember what car, um, categories it's been in. I think it might be best foreign film. Obviously, I can't speak for the, what else is in those car, ca, categories because I've not watched it, but this is a great film. Really, really worth watching. Very sobering, you know. Um, but, but yeah, um, really well acted, very well done. Yeah, check it out on Netflix. Um, All Quiet on the Western Front. So yeah, they're, they're the shows I've I've been I've been watching. Um, it's quite quiet at the moment. At the, at it, it feels in terms of sort of new shows. I guess we're in that little bit of a lull, the new year, waiting for stuff to come up and see what's out there. So yeah, I'm not too sure what's next on the list to review. I'm sort of sitting here each week going, hmm, there isn't much to review this week, is there? <laughs> and I'm hard pass on Velma. Thanks very much. I'm not not doing that to myself. Blimey. Uh, <laughs> and the uh you know the the uh contra well not even controversy but the uh the shill media desperately trying to make out that it's popular and people want to watch that is just hilarious to watch it like playing out so um yeah we'll, we'll see on that one <laughs> uh crazy times we are living in but we do have been seeing this article starting to come out now about you know from mainstream media and sort of liberal media going oh this cancel culture thing this might not be so good mightn't it <laughs> and um do, do we think that um inclusion and diversity quotas are dumbing down and uh the workplace and are they um inhibiting um talent and are they you know are, uh are we with cancel culture uh stifling um arts and, and and writing and you know all the stuff that the people on youtube have been saying for the last five years and now you know as we know with all these things that uh it doesn't matter what you do it's never enough and now it's really coming back to bite these industries hard <laughs> so going hmm, was this such a good thing that we we championed and supported all of this so <laughs> but interesting to see interesting to see uh you know it's going to take a long time to turn that oil tanker around so uh that's that you know watch this space of all of that you know as as i've been saying and other youtubers have been saying you know we're starting to see some some changes in uh, most uh like warner brothers um the ceo of obviously netflix been fired ceo of disney was fired there's a bit of a shake up but you know the proof will be in the pudding in terms of you know what are they going to start commissioning? What are they going to start making? And we won't really, really reap the benefit or see what that's going to be for a couple of years yet. So uh, it's going to be interesting what we get or don't get over the next couple of years because, you know, these companies don't have money to burn now. And they, they've wasted so much money when they were cash rich on just dross and crap that nobody wanted to watch. So what's the point of repeating these things or plugging these things? Because if nobody watched it the first time around, they're not going to watch it the second time around. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it'd be interesting to see, you know, what, what entertainment we're actually going to get. Um, in terms of like people talking about what they're looking forward to this year, it's pretty, pretty thin on the ground. Uh, the, the same films just keep, keep getting mentioned in terms of, you know, um, Mission Impossible, John Wick 4, uh, June, um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and that's pretty much it. I mean, people aren't talking 
about a lot else. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a pretty bleak year, entertainment-wise. Um, you know, a timeline tell whether, you know, what will happen with the Doctor Who 60th and the and Shooty. Watch that space, you know. Uh, yeah, interesting times. Interesting times. There's going to be, going to be a big civil war <laughs> happening in Hollywood soon, it looks like. Um yeah, people are really sort of starting to sort of shift their positions and narratives and all like, like yeah, I, I always thought this is a bit too far and uh, trying trying to see which way the wind's blowing and make sure they're on the right side of that as they always do. It's gonna be quite funny to see 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 who survives, who's the casualties of the woke wars. <laughs> anyway, it's good to see that things are moving. You just gotta hope that. Uh, you know it it pans out into good entertainment what you know what what tends to happen is that you kind of go from sublime to ridiculous so let's hope it doesn't go too far the other the other way whatever that may look like who knows but let's just hope we get some balance and some common sense brought back into our entertainment that you know a joke's a joke and you know silence isn't violence and words isn't violence you know it's a uh, words can be cutting of course they can but come on um yeah watch, watching episode of the 18 in the 80s didn't turn me into a mass murderer or uh you know <laughs> go around beating anybody up because they're men with guns hey ho <laughs> what a crazy time we live in but anyway that's it for this week again short and sweet hopefully we'll get some good tv or some more good tv and films to review soon i'm gonna have to scour my channels to uh, uh, the streamings to uh, see what to review. I've heard a lot of good things about Tulsa King, the Stallone series over on Paramount Plus. So I'm going to check that out. And I heard that they've started filming Terminalist season two, which I'm very excited about. Can't wait to review that. Um, the subject matter of book two apparently is um, very much around sort of. Uh, Sort of the terrorists and the Al Qaeda and sort of ex militant extremists. So it'd be interesting to see how they adapt that or they, if they stick to that. I mean, obviously, the writer, I think, was an executive producer or was heavily involved with season one with his own adaptation. So hopefully, he's involved in season two. Um, it's like, will they, will they just they go all in and, and just adapt it as per the book or will they have to dial it down or will they? you know change the story completely we'll have to wait and see but very excited for that hopefully i mean i guess if they're filming this year we'll get it next year but good news either way and uh, we know they've been filming season two of reacher so again got that to look forward to so there's a few things floating through um but anyway yeah i'll see i'll see if i can check out tulsa king and let you know what i think next week so have a great week check out Lockwood and Co, do check out All Quiet on the Western Front and let me know what you think of The Last of Us. Are you enjoying it? Um, as always, please like, share and subscribe um, and leave me your thoughts and I'll get back to you soon. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.